I spent 100 days in this dead forest in Minecraft Hardcore. This was by far the most challenging experience I had in Minecraft. There are several things I'll need to worry about in these 100 days, such as blood moons and storms that can spawn powerful tornadoes. Additionally, there is also a terse and temperature system. Will I be able to survive in this harsh environment? Let's find out. On day 1, I started as usually by chopping a tree and getting stone tools. Right next to where I spawned there was a huge crater full of coal, iron and copper. I grabbed what I could. Once I had my first mob encounter I just ran away. Since my temperature and thirst were dropping, I decided to look for a village. Didn't take too long and found one already. A storm started behind me. It was clear these 100 days will not be too easy. On day 2, a storm started near, my, near the village. My temperature was dropping again, so I was forced to make a campfire and stay inside. On day 3, I decided to explore the village and uh, secure the survivors to ensure that they won't die due to storms and blood moons. Also got iron armor and tools. On the morning of day 4, I knew it was time to expand my house as it was getting kinda crowded. I mined some stone and expanded it. I also chopped some trees because my wood supply was getting lower. Nothing too special on day 5, I only got more cobblestone and made a tiny farm inside of my house. Right away as day 6 started, I started expanding my house again and by the end of, day, of this day, I could finally call this place home. As the sun rose on day 7, I remember I had a book called Animal Dictionary and decided to read its content. Seemed like there were several creatures I didn't know about and read it. As I felt that my villager had uh, no friend, I went on a journey in the village and brought him one. The villager seemed to enjoy his new home. Day 8, worked a little bit inside improving the house's look until it started to rain with hail. At that point I understood that the storms were starting to become more common and brutal. Luckily for me this time was not the case, there was no damage done to anything. In the evening I went back and took a peaceful nap. On day 9 I made a little mine and mined all day long. Day 10, yeah, I added stairs to my mine as I got a serious headache every time I hit my head in those rocks. Also expanded my property with a new room. On day 11, something very strange happened. While I was chopping some trees, some pillagers appeared. Now, just so you know, these weren't your average pillagers. For some reason, they kept dodging my attacks. Take a look. Stop it. Stop it. What are you doing? Other than that, nothing special happened. On day 12, I chopped even more trees. The problem I had was there weren't enough villagers in my base, therefore I went and stole a villager. While doing so, I almost froze to death. Until the end of this day, I had three villagers and my base only kept looking better. At least on the inside. Right away as day 13 started, I was eager to get the, the villager to be a Fletcher. Since I chopped so many trees in the previous two days, I had a pretty good wood supply and wanted to trade for emeralds as quick as possible. And that's exactly what I did. Besides trading, I also expanded the mine this day. The only thing I did on day 14 was mining, so let's skip this to day 15. Day 15. Uh, was a lucky day. I found my first diamonds. There were four diamonds in total. I was very happy that I found these beauties. I also decided to keep the diamonds for later use as I didn't need to craft anything out of them right now. As the sun rose on day 16, I was happy because of the diamonds I found the, pr I found the previous day. My happiness soon came to an end, because a tornado started right above my house. I felt very unsafe and very scared. Luckily for me the tornado hasn't done much damage. In the evening I went to sleep and that relaxed me a little bit. On the following day I went mining as I wanted to get more valuable resources such as diamond. Day 18, this was the day I built a second roof to my house, because it was getting crowded again. 
On day 19, I wanted to improve my arsenal. I searched for some better weapons, sadly they all required leather. As animals can spawn naturally here, I was forced to wait until I could get the chance to get something. On the following day, I found a cave. Since I was very scared at that time because my gear wasn't good enough, I blocked the entrance and went upstairs. In the evening a wandering trader spawned, he didn't have anything too special so I just went to sleep. On day 21 a wonderful idea came in my mind. What if I could get the wandering trader's llama inside and let them live with me? I felt still pretty lonely although I had the villagers with me, so this made me feel less lonely. Right as day 22 started, I wanted to improve the look of my house and that's what I did. Besides that, nothing too special happened. Day 23 was my lucky day again. I went mining and found 13 beautiful diamonds. Think about that, that is a lot. I was very excited about that. Since I had 17 diamonds on day 24, I crafted myself a diamond chest plate and a diamond pickaxe as I thought they'll come in handy later. Later that day, I also changed the exterior of the house a little bit. I know it didn't look perfect, but it had to do it for now. Day 27 was tree chopping day. I took one of the many iron pickaxes I had from the weaponsmith and started my true lumbering career. On day 26, I improved my house more by adding logs to my house. I also added cobblestone bricks because they looked very nice and they were very very easy to craft. On day 27, I did the same thing. So nothing too special happened that day, so let's skip to day 28. The next day was a stormy day and rainy day too, therefore I was forced to stay inside all day long. Day 27 was also a stormy day, this time a tornado formed right next to my house. The only special thing I did that day was to craft two golden apples, these will become very handy later on. On day 30 I wanted to go explore and see if I could find anything useful. I need the leather and I remember that sometimes villages can spawn with animals. This could be very important if I wanted an enchanting area or if I wanted to progress. I made the necessary preparations and started my journey. On my way I also found a lava pool. Sadly I couldn't pick anything of it up. After traveling for a while, I stumble across something unexpected. In front of me was standing a giant woodland mansion. This was even rarer since it was merged with a village for some reason. At that time, I didn't realize that the mansion was pretty much a time bomb. There were several lava lakes underneath it. Since I thought that the mansion was too hard to be taken down from underneath, especially since it was on fire, I went on the roof and guess what I found? I found a room full with bookshelves. I, I knew I needed to be fast and loot as much as I could because otherwise it would have burned. I ate my golden apple and got the bookshelves. Night soon fell and I slept on the roof. On the following day, the mansion was all on fire. But I exposed one of its hidden rooms. I found a weird cube-like structure made of obsidian. I grabbed it since I needed it for the portal. But that only revealed the actual secret. Hidden inside of it there was a diamond block, yes, an actual diamond block. The rest of the day I looted the remains of the mansion. As the sun rose on day 32, I kept looting and uh, found a weird enchantment book. I think it allowed you to get fire aspect free, I, I don't know. Later that day the unexpected happened. I tried to get down the mansion. I wasn't careful and... yeah. Let's just pretend it didn't happen and you see anything, okay? Okay, after that I went back home. It was already night time when I got back and I went to sleep. The next day I wanted to make an enchanting room since I had so many books. It was fairly easy to make the bookshelves. After finishing the room, I got my lapis and decided to start with the diamond pickaxe. Problem was there was a new enchanting system for some reason. 
I didn't even know what mod added this. I took some trash enchantments and uh, I couldn't understand the way it worked for now. Later I went to sleep. On the following day I started working on another room. This was the portal room. I wanted to build a nether portal to get access to other more very valuable resources such as netherite. This item would come in handy later on when there will be several lunar events such as blood moons. On day 35 I built a portal and went through, but guess what happened? Yeah, the game crashed. I tried several things afterwards to fix this issue. Later, when I logged back on, the unexpected happened. The game started to the game started lagging so badly that I was forced to delete the nether dimension for now, at least. After fixing the lag issue, I chopped some trees till night fell and then slept. On day 36, I traded with the villagers, more exactly with my trusty Fletcher that was selling me emeralds for only 32 or 31 sticks. Later that day I went enchanting and finally got the hang of it. The system was quite fun and interactive, it allowed you to combine enchantments and choose the ones you want from the, a list at the cost of insane amounts of XP. The next three days were all the same, chop trees for wood, trade with Fletcher and the other villagers for experience and goodies and then improve my swords enchantment. Overall boring but also rewarding. Day 40 was the big day, right as I woke up I heard a wandering trader outside of my house. I checked his trades and found out that he's selling crocodile eggs and a new kind of sapling that I could that couldn't be found naturally growing in this environment. I ended up buying two eggs and one birch sapling. Other than that, everything went the same until it didn't. The harvest moon. Right as I saw that message, I began I began harvesting as much as possible. But I realized you can harvest potatoes that aren't fully grown and get two instead of one. This discovery solved my food situation once and for all, and I really mean it. Later on you'll see, I'll have too many of them. Right away as the sun rose on day 41, I went tree chopping. Also I forgot to mention that I got the previous day my sword enchanted with smite 2, paralyzes, looting 1 and Berserker 2. Not the best, but it will do it for the next 60 days. On this day, after chopping enough trees, I went back home to trade with the villagers for experience. This was required as I started to enchant my chest plate, and I knew it would cost me an insane amount of experience levels. In the evening, a storm started. A llama was standing outside of my house. I was afraid the llama would, would die, but it didn't. On day 42, I went outside, got the llama and brought it inside. There was still one more llama outside, but I couldn't bring it, them both inside, as I already had two other llamas. Anyways, other than that, I made a third room. I don't know why. I think because I wanted to hatch those crocodile eggs there, but that never actually happened. The next day I went tree chopping and at the end of the day I bought diamond boots, that's mostly all that happened on day 43. On day 44 I kept enchanting my chest plate and I also traded with the villagers for more experience. The same happened on this day except I also chopped some trees. On day 46 I finally finished enchanting my chest plate. It ended up having protection 3, imperishable reflection 2 and dropper 2. After finishing with the chest plate, I disenchanted my pickaxe and enchanted it again as this time I knew how the enchantment system works. The next day I realized I can kill llamas for their leather. Since I had looting on my sword, this was a very good choice in the end. On day 48, I chopped more trees. Later in the evening I wanted to sleep but uh, I was I was I saw an unsettling message in the chat. Oh. Oh. Oh, the blood moon. These will be far more frequent throughout the, the next 52 days. Also that night I began to freeze in my own house. 
this was by far the hardest situation I've been in. Besides that, mobs were waiting for me outside of my house. Maybe you didn't know, but you can't sleep during blood moons either. This situation was getting out of control. I started to freeze, although there were a bunch of campfire next to me. And yes, I die, I couldn't do anything about it. The following day I added even more campfires, so I wouldn't freeze to death again. Despite all of my efforts I had done, I still died again. Not to mention I ate my golden apples too. Because of this, I just got rid of the mod. I was very angry at that time. Day 50. We are halfway through these 100 days. To celebrate this, I crafted myself a new weapon called the Concave Edged Halberd. This weapon was by far the highest damage weapon in game. The rest of the day was more, even more trading and enchanting. And on day 51, I got rid of all the mobs outside of my house and chopped trees until sunset. On day 52, I began my day by trading with the villagers. Afterwards, I finished enchanting my diamond pickaxe and started enchanting my halberd. The pickaxe had far better enchantments than it used to, including Efficiency 4, Fortune 1, Imperishable and Unbreaking 3. Not long after, a storm started, a huge tornado spawned right next to my house. After sunset, the blue moon rose. Since I didn't have a fishing rod, I went to sleep. Also, by the way, nights can no longer be instantly skipped. Instead, sleeping only speeds up time. The next day was back to tree chopping. Man, I started to hate this job. Additionally, the forest turned into something like a plains biome instead of a forest biome. On day 54, I followed my routine until the blood moon rose. This time, though, Instead of staying like a coward inside, I went like the mighty peach soda I am outside and killed the mobs. There were, technic there were technical issues too while killing the mobs, but overall it went decent. On day 55, I killed all the remaining mobs. After killing every single one of them, I proceeded to enchanting my halberd. It ended up with the following enchantments. Sweeping Edge 1, Berserker 2, Beheading 3, and Fire Aspect 1. So I know these aren't the best enchantments my halberd could have gotten, but hey, it will do for now. Anyways, it has a very high damage value, so I think it's a pretty decent weapon. Then in the evening I slept. As I woke up on day 56, I wanted to get many, as many emeralds as I could to finally get full diamond armor. And that's what I did. Later I realized I could have made my chest plate out of steel and it still would have gotten most of its trades but with less durability. It was too late though and anyways, some extra flex is never bad. Later I started constructing a new room. As I was working on that room I saw that another blood moon was rising. Therefore I went outside and killed all the mobs as I felt far more confident with my new weapons and armor. Day 57 was mostly killing the remaining mobs outside. Also got many mob heads from doing so. On day 58, I dug a huge tunnel. I wanted to find a cave full of iron. Additionally, I also wanted more experience. Then I found the cave and grabbed as much as possible. Then, when I got upstairs, a blood moon started. I wanted to kill the mobs again because I needed XP and the cave expedition did not grant me with much. Day 59 was the day I realized how many mob heads I had. From them being a rare item to flex with, now these became some of the most useless and common items I had. I also worked on, the, on a mob grinder which I'll never use throughout these, the next 41 days. On day 60 I realized that one of the swords that the mobs dropped was called Bastard Sword, which was a very interesting name. Then I googled the meaning and apparently this word actually existed and was used in the medieval age. Now, you might remember a couple days ago, I was working on a new room. Yeah, that room was supposed to be a brand new villager room. So I brought there a new villager and turned him into a librarian. Sadly, the poor guy was exhausted and he needed to sleep. That made me mad and therefore I expanded the room because I couldn't do anything else. 
and even after removing his bed, he still preferred to be a nitwit. Whatever, there was a harvest moon that night and I took advantage of that. The next day was just spending time to convince the villager to trade me mending books. In the end, I did manage to make him want to sell me a mending book, although the price for this will turn out to be terrible in the future and me ending up with better ending, mending books, it will do for now. Then in the evening I slept. On the following day I removed the mob heads from the wall because they were too many and they looked terrible. Somehow that's all I pretty much did that day. On day 63 I continued the mob farm project that means digging the tunnel that will lead back to home. I soon after got bored and decided that chopping trees is a better idea. While I was not having fun chopping trees, a storm started which made me happy because I didn't want to chop trees, so I went back home. Not long after, the storm brought a tornado right next to my house, so I stood all day long inside. There was a blue moon that, my, that night, so I made a tiny pond inside and fished. Right as day 64 started, I went outside and chopped more trees for emeralds. I also found a ruined portal, but it was destroyed by the tornado. On day 65, I started by trading with the villagers. I also brought all the villagers to the new villager room. There was also blood moon that night, so I took uh, the chance to get more levels. As the sun rose on day 66, I killed all the remaining mobs. On this day, I wanted to revisit the old touristic attraction, the mansion. There was a good reason behind this though. I wanted beds. Since I didn't have any and uh, also remember that there was a village nearby, I actually merged in it if I think about it, I knew it's gonna have beds. I needed beds because there will be more villagers instead of just the veterans that live in my villager room. Once I got there, it was almost night time but I took the risk anyways. I took everything I could and I even found myself a totem of undying. Early in the morning of day 67 I left. On day 67 I arrived home. On this day I improved the new villager room. I also enchanted the bow. This bow ended up being one of the most powerful weapons I ever had since it had power tree, explosive tip and flame. Explosive tip creates an explosion on impact with ground or mobs. This was insane. That night was a blood moon, so it was the perfect time to test this bad boy. Oh, never mind, it was a harvest moon, whatever. On day 68, I even went mining with the bow and ended up finding a geode and nine diamonds. I also traded more. In the evening, there was a black moon. On the morning of day 69, I went outside and chopped more trees. Very nice, boring day overall. Day 70 consisted of me mostly improving my protection level to my armor as I had a new librarian that sold protection 1 for 5 emeralds. Day 71 was the big day though, as I managed to fix the nether portal the nether slightly. Everything was very slow happening there, mobs barely moved, same with lava. I don't know why, but at least it worked. I had entered the nether without crashing the game. I also found a bastion nearby, but I mostly came here for netherite, so that's what I did. I went mining, boring, I only found one ancient debris. Funny enough, I spent about 40 minutes mining, but it was still day 70 in the F3 menu. Let's move to the part with the bastion looting. I started the siege even though my bow barely wanted to shoot. I blocked the entrances and made my way in the middle of the bastion and found the chest in the middle. This took about 20 minutes but finally, this time it was day 71. So on day 71 I got to the chests and looted them. I only found some diamond armor. Right as I wanted to leave, I told to myself that there is no way there is no netherite there. So I checked again. Glad I did so, because otherwise I would have missed the netherite ingot there. It looked very similar to the gilded blackstone, so yeah, I didn't see it. Then I returned back home. 
On day 72, right as I got home, I upgraded my diamond halberd to a netherite one. I also started enchanting my shovel, then I slept. Day 73 was the day I started the renovation of the villager room. As I worked more, I started to like the way it looked. I also tamed the cat that spawned inside. That night, there was a harvest moon, so I took advantage of that again. Day 74 was, was boring and mostly consisted of me chopping trees, so let's move to day 75. The sun rose on day 75, I wanted to work on the villager room, but I ran out of wood. I also found an interesting technique while chopping trees, and that is to, uh, to use my bow to explode a tree. Funny enough, it is more efficient than chopping the, the classic way. On that day, there was a blue moon, but I ignored it and went to sleep. Day 76 was pretty boring because I tried to get some good deals from a librarian and killing several iron golems. I ended up getting Vengeance 2, which is a pretty good enchantment, but sadly I realized it can be added to armor that has the protection enchantment. Therefore, on day 77, I made the decision to kill the villager as he was useless. It was nice while it lasted. Rest in peace, villager. I also improved the room a little bit more and then went to sleep. Day 78 was all about reorganizing villager room, replacing the floor with polished deep slate and overall improving the way it looked. The golems got very annoying and I was forced to kill all of them. They still kept on respawning which was, uh, which, which was good for resources but also bad because I didn't want them. On day 79 I went down in the cave I had found as I wanted to get more experience from the mobs. I did get 8 levels, but that was not enough. As I woke up on day 80, I was eager to start renovating the house as I had already finished the villager room. I started with the second floor and added a deep slate and added deep slate tiles as replacement for the cobble deep slate wall. At sunset I also got some glass for windows because the tornadoes broke some of them. There was a blue moon rising that night, but I ignored it and went to sleep. On day 81, right as I woke up, a tornado was right next to my house. I waited for the storm to pass and after it was clear weather, I went and grabbed more wood. On day 82, I continued the renovations. I finished the second floor, including the floor of the second floor. Uh, yeah, I know it sounds re weird, but it had to be said. Then in the evening, I started working on the house's roof. That night was also blood moon. Guess what I did? I jumped down and started fighting the undead. At that time, I did not realize uh, how dumb I was. Blood moons are incredibly dangerous as they spawn an insane amount of mobs. Some of the mobs can have superpowers. These superpowers can be either setting you on fire, make the mobs super strong, or make them very fast, and so on. It was an overwhelming fight. Even though I had almost the best armor in game, there were still some moments I thought I'm gonna die. So yeah, uh, I drank a potion that the mobs dropped that gave me speed 3, but it was in vain. Thankfully, I somehow managed to survive. That mistake will not repeat again. Nothing too special happened on day 83, so let's move to the next day. Right as I woke up on day 84, I continued working on the house's look. I even made a terrace on the rooftop. I ended up liking the way it looked. On day 85, I kept working on the house. As I was working, a tornado started. So I could watch it this time from the terrace or watchtower, however you'd like to call it. I also was very close to finishing the house. Day 86 to 87 were dedicated to get a sharpness book to add it to my halberd. It sadly did not happen. Also I tried adding mending every, for every of my armor piece, so I traded with the villagers. Also somehow my cat drowned, I think that this, those silly villagers pushed it in the water. Day 88 was the day I got bored trading and wanted to work on improving the house. Sadly could not as there was a tornado. 
As the sun rose on day 89, I wanted to finish building the roof. Although, through a miracle, I barely managed to do so right before a storm started. Luckily, the storm wasn't near my house. I managed to finish another wall because of that. There was a blood moon that night, so I began working on a crocodile room. I had bought those crocodile eggs and I would not let them to go to waste. On day 90, I read about the crocodiles and apparently once they hatch, they think their nearest mob that they see is their mother and they will not attack it. So I placed the eggs down and waited for them to hatch. Near sunset, near sunset I went chopping but sadly couldn't do much as night soon fell. Day 91 was a boring lumbering day. On that day I realized that there weren't any trees left around my house. I had to go very far away to get trees chopped. Day 92 to 95 were pretty much the same. I tried to make the villagers sell me cheap sharpness books. Also got a very good mending trade for only 6 emeralds. Also on day 95 the crocodiles hatched. In the morning of day 96 I checked on the crocodiles. Seems like they grew up. When I tried approaching them they bit me and almost and I almost died. Therefore I killed them but they dropped two more eggs for some reason. So I tried again this time, I'd be right there when they hatch. Also on this day I realized that my goal in these 100 days was to protect the forest and reestablish life. Instead the field looked like a wrecked battlefield with dead trees, craters from explosions and overall looked worse than before. Because of that, I decided to plant an evergreen forest with only trees that did not have the disease. I also added two new species that do not exist in this world, such as birch trees and sweet berries. On the next day I fished as I wanted to be there when the crocodile eggs would hatch. Day 98 was back to cycling through villager trades for sharpness. Sadly no luck this time either. Later that day, the egg started cracking, so I knew it was better to stay there when the crocodiles would hatch. At night, they hatched, and they weren't hostile to me this time. On day 99, I patched the holes outside of my house. It took a while, but in the end, I managed to do so. I also connected the mob grinder to my house this, time, this day. Day 100. This was the last day I will be spending in this series, so I took it very seriously. I finished the grinder and late in that evening I knew I needed to visit the forest that I planted to ensure that humanity can continue to exist despite that it brought this forest to an infested one. Then I slept for the last time. And yeah, it was day 101 and here we go 100 days in a dead forest in Minecraft Hardcore. If you enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I put a lot of effort into these videos. Hopefully you enjoyed it and until next time, bye bye!